Not yet, apparently. Not yet. I am. <laughs> well, then you can continue to chat for us. So thank you, Dr. Aubrey, for that. That was incredibly interesting. And now we have Dr. Mark Katakowski as well, who I'll let you give a little introduction to how you enter the space. Sure, I'm the uh, president and chief science officer of Forever Labs. Uh, we're a longevity company um, based in Ann Arbor, Michigan, but we're also operational and out here in nine other states. Um, we bank your stem cells with the, the purpose, the intent to use them, to, to leverage them, and to keep you healthier longer. I'll be talking about that tomorrow. Perfect. So to start at the genesis for both of you gentlemen, um, Kismet here is in sixth grade, and she has a question about how you entered this space. Yeah, so Dr. Aubrey, how did this pursuit to stop aging start? Right, so the question is really, why did I get into this? How did I get this way? Um, well, so I mentioned in my earlier remarks that I was originally a computer scientist and that I switched into this area in my late 20s. Essentially what happened was, when I was 26, I met, and shortly afterwards married, a biologist. And she was a lot older than me. She was already like 45. She was a full professor at UC San Diego. I was only 26. Um, through her, first of all, I learned a lot of biology just kind of by accident over the dinner table. But the key thing was that eventually, after a couple of years, I realized that we were never talking about aging. And it was only through that, through kind of osmosis, that I began to appreciate that she wasn't interested in aging. And I started asking difficult questions, you know, why? And she, I would say, like, you know, I mean, why aren't you interested? And she said, well, you know, it's decay, right? I mean, you're not going to learn any fundamental truths about the universe by studying decay. And I would say, well, you know, well, sure, but so the hell what? You know, I mean, it's bad for you. And she would say, well, you know, that's not my problem. And I would say, well, you know, it kind of is your problem, really. Um, um, but, and so fundamentally what happened here was I realized that there's a huge difference of mindset between basic scientists on the one hand and technologists on the other hand. Basic scientists are all about finding things out for the sake of finding things out. You know, they just like finding things out. Technologists want to find things out for humanitarian benefits, and I'm a technologist. But there's no, there were almost no technologists in, who were studying aging because it was considered too complicated to be able to do anything, right? And so that was what I tried to change. Thank you. And Dr. Mark, how did yours start? Oh, my journey. Um, so I also didn't start as a biologist. I started as a physicist. Um, and. Uh, I, I got into a lab doing my PhD research. Um, I stumbled into a lab of another physicist that started investigating using uh, stem cells to treat stroke because um, stroke is a number three killer of, of people and it's uh, terrible. You just basically, you get this, you lose some brain, you, you lose blood supplies, you blood supply the brain, you lose your you know, function and that's it. And they say, well, you know, stretch and exercise and maybe you get better. And we started looking at, well, can we use these cells that build and replace tissue in the, in the body? to help the brain heal itself after stroke. And, and um, after a while, I started to think about this. And we had some you know, positive effect. And that's led to this, you know, the clinical use of these cells. But I, after a while, I, I started to get really interested in, in the idea that, wait a minute, maybe this is not a rational approach. Um, you know, these cells that, that, that are, are building, that are using, you can build tissue, maybe they can be leveraged in a, a more rational way. Um, and I found that the cells actually decline as you get older. They lose their function. Lose their, and as a physicist, I think, uh, you know, Aubrey said something that, that, that aging is really a consequence of, of physics, not biology. And I, I, I strongly believe that. Um, and so I said, you know, maybe we can do something different. Maybe we can actually uh, look at the, the loss of the cells. And actually, maybe we can inter intervene there and, and increase our healthy lifespan. Well, lo and behold, this is something that Aubrey had been talking to, um, had, had been preaching for a long time uh, previous. Um, and uh, so I kind of stumbled upon this uh, notion of, of what is called, you know, longevity medicine or rejuvenation medicine, um, almost by, almost just by a frustration in, in, in this idea of t treating things that go wrong in your body symptomatically. Um, you know, we, we don't take a rational approach to, to our bodies like we take a rational approach to the maintenance of our car. You know, we, we, we don't drive our car until the engine seizes up. We, we take it in for maintenance and, and we can, um, technology is enabling us to do that. So that's what really drove me to this. Well, I think that's fascinating because both of you have been, you know, thinking of, you've been very forward thinking and in the space and looking at it 
since way before it was cool, which is now starting to come back around. And I would like each of you to talk a little bit about what you've seen as the trend line and what, what's been changing in the space recently. Yeah, you're right. It very, very much wasn't cool when I got involved. Uh, but I want to say, you know, I have stood on the shoulders of people who were doing what I do when it was even less cool than that. You know, uh, 10 years before me, you had Cynthia Kenyon at UC San Francisco, who made an important breakthrough in um, figuring out how aging works in short-lived organisms back in the early 90s. And she went out there completely fearlessly talking about how we've really got to do something about this and um, you know, bring aging to be a medical discipline where we can actually do something about it. She was doing this from a position of great vulnerability because she didn't even have tenure back then. And yet, um, you know, uh, it, was, uh, it was when things, when it was far more unacceptable to be saying such things. And when aging was totally viewed as something that you studied in the way that you would study earthquakes. Um, before that, there was Michael Rose at UC Irvine, who again, you know, was extremely outspoken way before he had the um, you know, authority to, to get away with it. And, the, and so, I, so it's really, you know, it's been a progression. But you're totally right. Look, in the past few years, it's night and day as compared to how it was 15 years ago when I started getting, making a real nuisance of myself. And Dr. Mark, you were talking about how you see actually a fair amount of overlap between, you know, like the cryptocurrency conversation comes up in your clients. And is there just similar thinking in terms of thinking more long term or thinking about maybe alternative technologies? I really think so. Um, so, yeah, our, our clients, like I said, we bank stem cells. And our clients, it's funny, we end up, when I go to a lot of these, like, you know, procedures, like we end up talking cryptocurrency. I, I'm an enthusiast. I've been, you know, in it for quite some time. And I do think it's not a mistake. It's not coincidence that, you know, we're here talking about uh, living, you know, longer at, at a cryptocurrency conference. Because I, I think that the mindset, I think maybe Aubrey was talking at the end, um, of people that they don't, they don't have this, um, you know, kind of like cultural baggage um, or this, this, this um, of, you know, the philosophical baggage of, of, of that prevents them from thinking in a transformative way. So we, the tools are there. If the tools are there, the change is going to come. And the tools for, um, you know, maintaining, like, uh, health, homeostasis are coming. They're, 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 they're there. And so the change is going to come. And I think they recognize that. They see, you know, not just what, what we have today, but they say, well, if this exists, well, then this is going to be the consequence. And I think that's what excites us. Um, to, you know, in the cryptocurrency community and what excites us in like the longevity space. Very cool. Kismet, you have another great question for the doctors. Yes. So how and why do you think this is going to work? <laughs> well, that's Aubrey. <laughs> well, first of all, let's say why it's going to work, because that's a question that doesn't have a time frame attached to it, really. You know, I think that's an easy question to answer. The body is simply a machine. Of course, the human being, the human thing, might have some kind of soul, you know, some kind of non-physical component. But who cares? Because the fact is, aging isn't about that. Aging is about the physical component of the, of the human being, namely the human body. And the human body is made of atoms and molecules, same as any inanimate machine is. So we know that the function of the human body is determined by its structure, by what it's made of and how it's put together. Therefore, we know for an absolute fact that the better we can get at restoring an old human being in terms of their structure and composition at the molecular and cellular level, restoring them to how they were at a younger age, the more rejuvenation we're going to have in terms of their function, in terms of their mental and physical performance. So it's just like. Again, it's a fact of physics. There's no way that it could not be possible. How we're going to do it, of course, becomes a much more complicated question. The body is a really complicated machine, and therefore we have to address all of the various types of damage that it does to itself throughout life. And as I mentioned in my talk, it turns out that that's not quite so complicated as it looks. It's still really complicated. That's why we're still a research organization. But we're getting there. So I believe that the combination of these various types of damage repair therapies that we're developing, which I believe will all be in place in some form or another within the next 15 years or so, you know, that is very likely to be enough. Yeah, I I don't have a lot to add except that, yeah, there's no magic there. It's a physical system, and, and, and the more that we understand about it um, and the better we can manipulate it, the, the 
more that we can drive the outcome. And, and our, ability, our understanding and our ability to manipulate has just grown phenomenally. And so therefore, the outcome is going, we're going to be able to you know, change it. Thank, Thank you. you. And just in the 30 seconds that we have left, what can people do today? If there was one thing that you could give, one piece of advice. Yep, you can give me large amounts of money. <laughs> um, I, I, I know, I, 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 I always try to make that sound like a joke, but unfortunately it's not a joke. The fact is that at this point, the only things that really have a significant impact on how long you're going to stay healthy in old age and how long you're going to live are the things that you've known since your grandmother was born. You know, that just don't get overweight, don't you know, smoke, you know, have a reasonably balanced diet. That is really all. None of the sophisticated, supposedly interesting things that people have come up with recently have really made any measurable difference to that. Of course, there's different people have different amounts of problems. Some people have drawn really short straws and you know, they get particular aspects of aging sooner than others, and there are certain you know, vitamins and supplements that may help those people, but most people who are already going to live a perfectly normal average kind of lifespan and stay reasonably healthy until 70, 75, you know, there's really nothing. We need new therapies, and the only way we're going to get them sooner rather than later is by hastening the research. Yeah. Um yeah, help funding funding science like the Sens uh, Foundation, you know, funds is is critical. Uh, the National Institute of Health, National Institute of Aging, they they operate under a different set of assumptions. They're kind of in a trance, and um, to really need to move the ball, you, we need to fund um, research that will do it. Uh, and it's happening. People are waking up to this. Um, as, as, you know, as examples of, of the successes that you get, you know, you can treat the commonality of aging, a, comp a, a commonality of aging, you get so much more return on your investment than treating a symptom. So uh, it's, it's money well spent. Um, I would say, uh, you know, personally, you know, take care of yourself, you know. Um, diet and exercise, of course, they're proven, get sleep. Um, and, and, you know, and I'll talk about tomorrow. I think, for me personally, I think it's really well worth, you know, just banking some of your own biology. You know, you, you got your crypto in cold storage, you just put your stem cells in cold storage. Um, I think that'll give you a leg up uh, in some of the things that we're gonna do between now and, now and you know, then. But, yeah. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you, lady. Yes. Thank you, folks. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.